bringing you the news and information you need from the people making a difference. This is Comcast Newsmakers. AIDS has reached crisis proportions in the state of New Jersey, but it's affecting groups that you may not associate with AIDS and HIV. Hello and thanks for joining us. I'm Jill Horner. This hour's newsmaker is Senator Nia Gill of the 34th Legislative District. Today we're talking about the AIDS epidemic, especially among women and children. Thanks so much for being with us, Senator. Thank you very much. This is such an important issue for us to discuss because the state of New Jersey really has some negative statistics concerning AIDS cases. I think they have some alarming statistics, particularly as it relates to women and children. We're number one in the nation of, uh, with women who are infected with HIV and AIDS. Out of that proportion, African American women um, are at the highest risk of um, new cases of AIDS. In heterosexual women in New Jersey, the highest risk category for infection. As it relates to the children, we are third in the nation of children who are affected uh, by AIDS and HIV. And it's estimated that over 22,000 children in the state of New Jersey have been orphaned because of uh, their parents dying from HIV or AIDS. So that the face of AIDS in New Jersey is really the face of women and children. And this is really a place that New Jersey doesn't want to be, number one, in women develop, uh, contracting AIDS, and number three, in orphan children. Yes, and we're number three in the nation in children who are infected by AIDS. So that uh, as the wealthiest state in the union, uh, I'm quite sure that we can address and must address the issue in a more proactive and out of the box uh, thinking in terms of how to empower, educate, uh, the communities and not make it an isolated individual incident but to understand that it is part of community building and we have to go to where the women are and we have to be able to, um, I, I think we should declare it a public health epidemic uh, because it rivals the statistics in some third world nations. That's an unbelievable thing to think in, in this densely populated, successful state in a lot of ways. You're really asking people to reconfigure the concept of AIDS and realize that those affected by HIV and AIDS are members of our communities. They're members of our communities in the faces of children. And uh, most often the children, even the ones who are orphaned, are uh, cared for by uh, grandparents or they are placed in the overburdened DIFUS system as it begins. So it really is an investment in our society to um, treat this on the front end, to make prevention, um, promoting uh, responsible relationships, and empowering women to make them know that they can insist upon and should insist upon uh, safe relationships because at the end of the day, uh, the children are the ones who suffer most. What are some of those out-of-the-box approaches? What do you encourage women to do? What do you encourage community groups to do? Well, what we have been doing and working with uh, community groups and women, and women come to the forefront if it is at your uh, church gathering, at your tea, if it's in a uh, discussion generally around school issues, to begin to have that dialogue, to take the information. And that information has to be addressed as a community effort. Of course, we have the churches in the more established uh, institutions. And I think the way we address it to become informed in order to save our children, in order to save our communities. Because really what we're addressing here is if we don't address prevention and education, in the long run, this is going to cost a lot of money and a lot of lives. Yes, and it's not only the physical, uh, the financial, and it's the human tragedy of it all. All right, thanks so much, Senator. Thank you. Thanks for watching. This hour's newsmaker has been Senator Nia Gill of the 34th Legislative District. I'm Jill Horner for Comcast Newsmakers. Thank you.